In this lesson, we begin to explore the fact that molecules are not standing still, but are constantly in motion. And one of the ways that they could be in motion is through rotation about a single bond. So conformational analysis is the name of this topic, and conformations are simply the relative orientations of groups bound to two carbon atoms as a function of rotation angle about the carbon-carbon single bond. Okay, so as an example, we're going to use a simple molecule, namely ethane. Two carbons, and bound to each of the two carbons is three hydrogens for a total of six hydrogens. Okay, so what I have drawn on the screen are the two extreme conformations of ethane. Okay, so conformation one is indicated with the model as follows. So the left-hand carbon has a hydrogen pointing straight up, and then of the two that are pointing down, one is pointing towards you, and one is pointing away from you. On the right-hand carbon, there is a hydrogen pointing straight down, and then one pointing up and towards you, and one pointing away from you. Okay, so this is conformation one. The other extreme is conformation two, which I could obtain from conformation one by holding the right-hand carbon in place and rotating the left-hand carbon by 180 degrees. Now, both carbons have a hydrogen pointing straight down, and of the ones pointing up, there's one pointing towards you and one pointing away from you. There is a better way to draw the structure than the traditional way using dashes and wedges when we are talking about conformations. And that is what's called a Newman projection. It is actually easier to see what's going on with the relative positions of the hydrogens on what we're calling the left and right hand carbon if I hold the molecule between myself and you so that you don't see the back carbon very well compared because it's blocked by the front carbon, but you can very easily see the three other groups on the front carbon and the three other groups on the back carbon. This is called a Newman projection. When we actually draw it on a piece of paper, the back carbon gets a circle and the front carbon gets a dot at the center of the circle. Okay, so if we wanted to look at conformation one, the conformation that we originally drew, on the front carbon, the one closer to you, there's a hydrogen pointing up, down and to the left, down and to the right, and then on the back carbon, the one closer to me, there's a hydrogen pointing straight down, back and to the left, back and to the right. Okay, this conformation, because the six hydrogens are as far apart from each other as they possibly can be is called the staggered conformation. The other conformation, conformation two, would have a Newman projection that looks like this. Remember the way I get it is if I hold the front carbon and rotate it 180 degrees, I can get to conformation two in Newman projection. And because the hydrogens are on top of each other, as I look at the molecule from front to back, this conformation is called the eclipsed conformation. Similar to the fact that in a solar eclipse, the, sun is com the moon is coming between the Earth and the sun. They are all lining up in an eclipsed conformation. The hydrogens, but more importantly, as we shall see, the bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens are completely lined up. Okay, so we have two extreme conformations. Which one is lower in energy? By how much and why? Okay, so to answer the, the answer to this question is that the staggered conformation is lower in energy by three kilocalories per mole, which is approximately 12 kilojoules per mole, because the eclipsed conformation suffers from what we call torsional strain. Okay, what's torsional strain? Well, the definition is that it's an energetic destabilization due to repulsion of electrons in bonds in an eclipsed conformation. 
What does that mean in real life? Well, you've got electrons in this carbon-hydrogen bond, you've got electrons in that carbon-hydrogen bond, and as we've already explored in the concept of molecular geometries and Vesper theory, electrons don't like each other very much, and they want to get as far away from each other as possible. Well, in the eclipse conformation, the electrons in these CH bonds are closer to each other than they would be in the staggered conformation, where there is now a 60 degree angle between them. So getting the electrons in the CH bonds further away from each other is what makes the staggered conformation more stable than the eclipsed conformation. Some students think that the eclipsed conformation is less stable because the hydrogen atoms can bump into each other in the eclipsed conformation. There will be cases when we're dealing with molecules larger than butane where you have to worry about atoms bumping into each other, but simply for the case of ethane where there are just hydrogens, there is, hydrogens are small enough that they're not going to bump into each other. So we're not actually worried about atoms bumping into each other. We're worried about the repulsion of the electrons in the bonds. Okay, so if we consider the two conformations as being in equilibrium with each other. Okay, so we can draw an equilibrium arrow between eclipsed and staggered and go to the equation delta G equals minus RT ln K, one of the most important equations in chemistry, and plug in 12 kilojoules per mole for delta G, okay, that's the energy difference, you will get a value of 126 for K for your equilibrium constant. Okay, so what does that mean? That means at any given point in time, 99.2% of ethane molecules are in the staggered conformation. Or if you prefer, ethane spends 99.2% of its time in the staggered conformation. However, 12 kilojoules per mole is a small enough energy barrier that it is possible for the molecule to rotate through the eclipsed conformation on the way from one staggered conformation to the other. So basically, the molecule is going to spend most of its life in a staggered conformation. It'll, it, it'll wiggle around a little bit in that staggered conformation, but it can pass through the eclipsed conformation to get to another staggered conformation, pass through the eclipsed conformation, and get to yet another staggered conformation. The, the energy barrier associated with going through the eclipsed conformation is one that is accessible to the molecule. Okay, it is a much, much, much smaller energy barrier than the energy barrier associated with breaking a covalent bond. So what we could actually do is draw an energy diagram for the rotation of ethane and show how the energy changes as a function of what we call the dihedral angle. When we talk about dihedral angle, we're talking specifically about the angle between the, the CH bonds on the front carbon and that on the back carbon. So we are going to assume a staggered conformation as our starting conformation, and the zero degree conformation has the hydrogen in front pointing up and the hydrogen in back pointing down. Okay, this is the lowest energy conformation, and when we're making these energy diagrams, which show how the energy changes as a function of rotation angle, we usually want to start with a low energy conformation. Okay, so to make this simple, we're going to hold the back carbon still, and we're going to rotate the front carbon clockwise by 60 degrees to get each successive conformation. Okay, so this is zero degrees, that's a staggered. If we rotate the front carbon 60 degrees, we get to an eclipse conformation. Okay, that's now higher in energy by 12 kilojoules per mole. Rotate it by another 60 degrees, we're back to another staggered conformation. In the case of ethane, these two, this conformation is indistinguishable from the conformation that we started with. 
rotate another 60 degrees so that we've rotated 180 degrees from where we started, we're at another eclipse confirmation. 60 more degrees or 240 total takes us to a staggered. 300 degrees total, another 60 degrees takes us to an eclipse. And then finally, 60 more degrees takes us back to where we started from, the exact same confirmation we had at zero degrees. Okay, and then you can see on the diagram how the three eclipse confirmations are all the same energy, the three staggered confirmations are all the same energy, and the eclipsed confirmations are higher in energy than the staggered confirmations by 12 kilojoules per mole.